purpose for this call is to uh, hopefully chat away forward for resumption of therapy services for the communities we serve and also to check in on other ways in which you can engage with our beneficiaries. So I'm very mm -hmm. excited to welcome Lydia Chege. She will be our moderator for the day. And um, just to mention, I will be recording the conversation and right after the meeting, we will be sharing what um, the different uh, things that are going to result from this call. So welcome Lydia. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Maria. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. Let me take this opportunity to thank uh, Maria Omare. Maria Omare is the founder and the CEO of uh, the Action Foundation, and she's she's a young mom who has time to care and think about uh, other mothers and other fathers, basically parents, and uh, therefore she's a caregiver at heart. I would uh, like us to start this meeting with the self-introduction so that at least we are aware of uh, what organizations are represented here. So I will ask us to introduce ourselves and uh, if we are representing uh, an organization, kindly let us know uh, which organization we are representing. We are 11. So as the team grows, then I will not, uh, we, we shall not reintroduce ourselves uh, for those who will be joining us later. So I'll ask us to introduce ourselves. I'll also ask us to switch off video uh, for the sake of the bandwidth. Uh, it, we will have a problem with other people. So I near uh, a sock. Uh, kindly switch off your video. Uh, could we introduce ourselves very fast? We start with uh, Maria, Neema, Wanjiru, uh, the Action Foundation, Ainea, CN, Christine Mutena, Caroline, Megna, uh, Josephine Karari, and uh, Moto G. Okay, we go. Um, yeah, good morning once again, everyone. Um, I'm Maria Umare, the founder and ED at Action Foundation. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah. This is Naima Ibrahim, the Programs Coordinator at the Action Foundation. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everyone. This is Wanjiro Mbugwa, um, the m and &E support at the Action Foundation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Melan Marucha from Action for Children with Disabilities and Sense International. Good morning, everyone. This is Victor Osok from the Action Foundation. Good morning, everyone. This is Christine Mutana, a parent of two kids with disabilities and also founder of Step by Stones Association, a parent support group for parents of kids with disabilities. Hi. Good morning. Uh, this is Charles Nyakundi, a disability practitioner. I also work for BSO. Good morning, this is Caroline Remery, Director of Special Education Professionals, SEP. Good morning, thank you. Hi, my name is Meghna. I've recently moved to Nairobi. I am a clinical manager at Kaizora Center for Neurodevelopmental Therapies. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think I proceed. And now that uh, we have, we are about 11 of us and therefore we make a good quorum for discussion. Colleagues, uh, this meeting has been called to discuss therapy support during COVID-19 uh, shutdown of um, such services. And we are aware that um, parents and children who come to us for therapy services have not attended therapy services since March 16th. That gives us um, uh, about two, two months. Yeah, it's exactly two months. And uh, we know and appreciate that uh, there, is, there are issues arising uh, by the children not attending therapy. And these issues could range from 
um, regression. It could also be uh, definitely lost milestones. It could uh, go to uh, a panic on the part of the principal caregiver, uh, especially when there was so much gained and uh, now somebody is with a child or with children, uh, in the case of Mutena with us here, and wondering all that we've gained over the years is going to be lost like this. Uh, and the Action Foundation, together with Kenya Institute of Special Education, thought it wise for us to have this kind of a, a forum for us to specifically discuss uh, what uh, is therapy like during this period of COVID-19. Uh, I would wish that we have experiences uh, shared. I will call upon uh, Sepp uh, to share with us what is it like uh, to think about therapy during the era of COVID-19. And I will also ask uh, Christina to share as a parent what is it like to uh, think about these children that I have in the home and uh, they are supposed to be attending therapy. They have actually been attending therapy, but now they're not attending therapy. What is it like for parents? Are parents doing something? Is there somebody reaching out to you? And what better can be done than what is being done right now? So I give it to Sepu to share what they are doing. And then uh, Christina will come up. Thank you, Lydia, for this uh, opportunity. Yes, so um, we are calling uh, most of our parents to uh, continue with the advice for home programs. So um, I just had a meeting with the team. They all keep on calling at least once every week or every other week. And they uh, get uh, feedback from the parents on what is new, what has happened, and then they get new advice uh, for the following week or weeks. So far, they have a very good impression. So they say that 80% uh, of the people they reach are actually doing the home program. Um, especially when we talk about children, young children, who, um, who, yeah, who have been able to come to the centers before, who have seen what we are doing, who have been partner in the whole intervention, they are uh, empowered to continue with the intervention at home. It's much harder for the older children, like in the rural areas, um, people who have gone to school or have not gone to school, but um, they have known all the ADLs, they uh, are doing the, the home course. So that is much harder now to keep activities for, to keep them busy and engaged because we cannot uh, ask them to, to do teaching, you know, that's uh, not part of uh, the parents' role as such. But so all in all, we are really happy with, with the intervention that we are able to give. Um, and also the team is, uh, yeah. is together when the yeah. physio is calling a parent and it's more the language issue, the physio will call the speech therapist and then the speech therapist will call the parent again. So I think that is what we are doing. Um, some people are not reachable, but it's still a small amount of the parents that is not reachable. So um, we also have peer educators in the field and they also keep on calling the parents. So we also get feedback from them. If a parent needs more help, then we can call an extra time. That is for SEP. Thank you. Thank you, SEP. Um, I don't know whether we would like to ask a few questions to SEP before Christina comes up. Uh, it's open. No questions? Any input? Okay, maybe I can maybe... add one thing, Lydia. Yeah, yes. Before, um, so we, we, it's, it's more an oral thing and sometimes they send a picture of a position of a child, for example. In few cases, very few cases, there's a video because most of the parents have, have just normal phones and not um, uh, um, smartphones. So that would be an advantage if parents could have smartphones, you know, even be better then. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I was wondering. Um, okay. The parents sent pictures. When you say you, there are some parents you've not reached. What percentage of parents are say is calling, and what percentage of parents haven't you reached at all since the the, the lockdown? I believe it's like only ten percent. Um, because we know it's like a whole network, yeah? If we don't reach, we call the peer educator, and then the peer educator can maybe do a physical visit or call someone else who lives close by. So it, it's a, a small amount. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed by that. I'd expect that it would be uh, uh, more people not reachable, but uh, it's going very well, actually. Uh, you've talked about peer educators. Yes. Uh, was this uh, something you had in place before COVID or is it something you've put in place after COVID? So that's something we had in place before. So when we uh, worked in the rural areas because we don't go there all the time, So like uh, seven people within one community, some are parents, some are community volunteers and some are teachers. And so they, those seven people now were uh, sent out in the community to identify more families who have a child with disability. And so they formed support groups and that is still existing. So this is a program that we started, uh, it's now the fourth year that we do this. And it's really working very well. Yeah. Uh Thank you, Sepp, uh, for, for that sharing. Uh, from what you've shared, it seems like there were already structures in place before COVID-19, exactly. and those structures have helped you to stay in touch uh, with uh, the parents and yeah. uh, to ensure continuity of therapy. Yes. You've also said that uh, there's a lot of uh, oral discussion. Yes. Uh, um, without looking yeah. like an interrogation. Uh, I know within us we have counselors in this group. Are parents experiencing any form of um, psychological burnout? Do they get overwhelmed? Have they re reported such uh, cases? And lastly, have you as an organization been able to visit any parent at home to just see what they are doing? That's still to me, yeah? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, the... the Yes, we have a few parents who have uh, given this the, the sign that they can't cope with it. And then, no, that was today that we discussed this so that we will try to have the main person, the peer educator, to visit because that is not uh, in, within our reach. Um, we also have psychologists in our team. So in case the, the first uh, talk is done, then the psychologist could make a call and uh, see if we can help that way. Um, what was the second question again? With my phone. Uh, I, I think you. Uh, uh, the second question is: Have you done any home visit? Uh, no, we have not done any home visits ourselves. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for you've given us so much. I'm sure we are going to uh, really de deliberate on that. Uh, may I call upon uh, Christina? Christina Mutena. Hello. Yes, Lydia. Um, uh, we would like you to share, not just as an organization, but also but as, as a parent. parent. Yes. That's fine. I'll actually share it from a parent's perspective. And you find that um, we don't have access. Um, personally, I have access to therapy, and that is for speech and ABA. But my daughter used to do occupational and I'm not sure how that can be done through teletherapy. But in terms of speech and ABA, as much as we are doing it over the, on Zoom and all that, I still find that I have to be present. I have to try and understand what the therapist is saying. So it's a bit overwhelming on me because before I just used to drop her there and pick her up. Now I have to sit by her, listen, try and ensure she's following, help her, help the therapist. And sometimes even like now for my second banana who's doing therapy, she walks out. So you have to run after her with a laptop, whatever she is, because therapy has to be done. Then also you find that it's 
it's we don't have the skills for that therapy we don't have the we don't have the emotional skills we don't have the theory skills sorry she's here with me we don't have so by the time we're we are learning on the job something is getting missed out at some point so you find that it's 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 at all we're actually getting burnouts we are getting tired there's a time i even i think it was the day before yesterday i had to take a nap in the middle of the day because the school that they're trying to do therapy i mean they're trying to do classes that's not working there's therapy you have to do here i have two kids so i have to shuffle between the both of them i just i just went and slept for like an hour because now i couldn't even focus on anything yeah, if, if i'm not okay then no one is okay in the household so mm. it's a bit no, let me let me be honest it's a lot it's not a bit it's a lot and i don't know how others are coping for me i'm lucky because my kids have a shadow teacher so she's assisting with the homework and stuff but for those without shadow teachers for those without internet for those without access to therapy be it speech be it even physio you can't do physio over 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 zoom so it's, it's for the parents it's for the parents to actually pull up their their sleeves and try and do something about it but we're not equipped for that so i don't know how how we're gonna survive this yeah okay uh christina thank you thank you that was uh really deep sharing and uh we hear that um there is need for an, for emotional skills and uh, you used words like um i have to understand what the therapy is saying and then i'm doing it just the thought of you know the visual thought of seeing you run with a laptop after the child then i i i, I ask that we know very well from data from the National Bureau of Statistics uh, that uh, most of our parents are in, in the informal uh, settlements. And uh, therefore, some of these privileges, like uh, uh, the way SEPs uh, shared, uh, the parents do not have uh, smartphones. They, do, they, they, don't, they won't have that laptop. Or even if they have it, who, who knows? They don't have internet. So I would like to ask the therapists in the house, and I start with Megna, and then I will go to Gesora from Kiste. Uh, Megna, you've moved into the country. You've listened to the two experiences, one is an organization that is very well established and the other one is the experience of uh, a parent. Uh, what would you say at this uh, point? And um, after that, Gesora, then I'll be inviting Eva. I can see Eva is around with us. Uh, Eva, we are talking about therapy, so you prepare mm. to talk about therapy after this. <laughs> so Megna, welcome. Please, you're sharing. Yes. Um, thank you for this opportunity to share. Um, I can understand, I can totally imagine for someone, not only a parent, just for someone who's not from a special education background, um, to feel very overwhelmed with the amount of um, information that is shared with them by therapists. And I think as Christine shared, um, it's really important as a therapist for us to understand how we support and guide the parents. So I think even before we dive into therapy sessions with their kids, if we can spend some time with the parents just understanding uh, what they need, what kind of support, what they're comfortable with, and you know, build that rapport and understanding with the parents, I think the sessions can, will go much smoother for the kids. Um, so that's my, um, my take on uh, collaboration with parents. I hope I answered your question. Uh, thank you, Megna, for the sharing. You've used the words, if we could spend some time with the parents. Could you please expound a little bit on that? Is it virtual or is it if we could get the parents and uh, we sit down with them and understand what they're going through? Just uh, elaborate a little bit on that. Right. So, um, unfortunately, we didn't have the chance to do that right before uh, we shut down, we closed our doors. Uh, I think we weren't prepared for it. So the only option we have now is to do it virtually. And that might mean um, just, you know, being maybe on Zoom or on a call 
and just talking to each other about what the goals are going to be, how we can work on them within the home setting, if it's relevant with the current situation, do we have the resources um, to work on these areas. So um, that's what I'm looking at as um, an interaction with the parents. If it would have been face to face, that would have been great. Um, even if the parents could come in and observe some of the sessions, that would also give them an idea of how therapists run them and we could discuss the nuances that um, you know, we can use to generalize uh, the skills at the center and at home. So uh, a face-to-face -face interaction would have been great, but I think even a virtual one um, can uh, have its own benefits at this point. Uh, thank you. Thank you for what you've shared. I'm sure my colleagues are processing what you've said. Uh, and I have heard this word over and over again that yes, we, we are proposing a virtual space, but uh, a face-to-face -face would have been uh, better. Uh, Vincent Gesora, uh, you've been a therapist, you have parents. Uh, what is therapy in the era of COVID-19? Uh, and uh, when we talk about parents, we have to balance between parents who can afford uh, to Zoom and you work with them and parents who cannot afford, uh, but at the end of the day, they have children that need to be attended to. Vincent, if you can hear me. Uh, yes, Madam Lydia, I can hear you. Uh, good. Uh, Still morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Hope you're all keeping safe uh, amid this, this COVID-19. Uh, so uh, uh, to your question, Madam Lydia, it's quite a challenge uh, to all, all the parents actually who have uh, special kids. Uh, this comes uh, from uh, the groups, the messages from the group uh, that we have, our WhatsApp group. From the Kise uh, fam, uh, uh, team, we have a group and uh, they air their grievances there. So most of the key, uh, the parents uh, talk about uh, issues like uh, nutritional issues. They don't know what to do with the kid in terms of nutritional purposes. Some have uh, issues. Maybe currently we don't have many uh, home programs going on uh, because of the issue. So they are wondering what to do. So as Kise, we had uh, previously uh, with the other therapists started to make short clips, maybe in some of the er various areas that they had uh, raised an issue. Though we are, we are yet to finalize and compile and start sending the, uh, the message, uh, the short clips to them. They are still uh, forwarding uh, so many issues. So we are still in the process with the management of compiling all these so that we can uh, share it with them. Another issue that we have uh, is that most of the most of the parents actually are not do not have the Android application phones to use. So we are kind of using one-on-one -on -one direct direct calls to uh, talk to them to assist them uh, wherever they, uh, they are they, whenever they have needs or issues they are raising. And the ones another issue is we have parents who have the Android. Uh, phones, but they they don't they can't access data to download uh, some short clips. So that, those are the some of the challenges that we're experiencing. Yes. Hope okay. Uh, thank, thank thank you thank you Vincent. Um, I I still would like us to break down. What is it like for somebody to give you instructions on uh, oral instructions and you're trying to do therapy on a child? And as Christina said, this is something that you are not really doing. You would go, uh, basically what I see in Kise, the parent is there observing the therapist. But now you've been given oral work to do and uh, some of the therapy um, uh, activities you find that the child either gets uncomfortable there's some levels of discomfort and the child will cry and i'm like will the parent withstand this i'm already seeing a lot of discussion on parents already getting burnout just teaching their ordinary children. Now I'm looking at us doing therapy and this child maybe starts crying and uh, here is the parent getting this burnout. Ivan Yoike. 
you 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 have been both uh, a teacher uh, a parent a mentor and all those things wrapped together i even don't know whether you've been a therapist but i'm sure you observed uh, therapy what is your take uh, as per this discussion that we are having this morning eva all right so i'm just listening to to the discussion and my heart really goes out to the parents because as you said initially when everything was the old norm not now the new norm parents mm. were parents parents mm. were actually parents they were mothers they were fathers and that was their role um now they've been thrown into a, a space where they have to be mother teacher therapist this is a little bit too much for the parents and i think we will end up having a lot of issues of um, mental illness you know we'll have parents just breaking down and there are two options the parents will either have a burnout um, get into some form of uh, depression or they will stop doing all these other things and just continue being parents and the options are there for parents what we don't need to do is put pressure on parents because i feel there's so much pressure that uh, the parents are being subjected to if for example we are doing therapy maybe and, and this goes out to the therapist in the house why don't we just focus on one aspect if we think and it let let it be a life skill a, a, a life skill aspect is it toileting is it um, dressing is it undressing let's just focus on one thing and give that parent that uh, activity to do because sometimes you'll find a parent doing so many things and they're just not equipped to do it we need parents to continue being parents we need them to be mothers we need them to be fathers we don't need mothers and fathers to be teachers and therapists because they are going to lose their children the, the children need their mothers and fathers right now so i think as much as we want life to continue in regards to interventions let's be very careful what we're giving out to parents to do for example what i give my parents in acorn are just little um clips on how we can have fun with the children at home how do we have fun we can play we can do art we can enjoy music together we can dance we can go out and run in the field we can plant flowers we can wash dishes we can wash our socks can we can we get those ones who can do those things let's let's focus on life skills i know there are parents out there saying but my child needs therapy your therapy for your child would probably be the love attention care you're giving Christina, my heart goes out to you and I feel like I want to come and visit you and give you a break, you go sleep, you know. But my heart goes out to you, Christina, because you're a mom, you're a therapist, you're a teacher, you're running around with a, with a laptop. Maybe that time, baby just doesn't need to, to have that session. You see, maybe baby just needs you to sit and sing with her. Maybe baby needs you to sit and look at a book together let's look at ways that we can enjoy parenting we can still enjoy parenting as parents because i'm also a parent of a child with special needs look, let's look for ways that we can encourage parents to enjoy parenting during this covid 19 era because as we say we have so many challenges we have limitations we are not access i mean we are not being able to access um this intervention to all parents there is this inequality in regards to um, uh, resources. Can we encourage parents to be parents? Let's talk to them positively and just tell them it's okay to be a mom. It's okay for you to sit with that child because we get to a point where we will actually make them feel guilty because they're not doing the therapy, feel guilty because they're not teaching, but God did not make them therapists. They did, God did not make them teachers. They made them parents so let us encourage parents to parent encourage parents to enjoy their children because there is too much stress going on there even the parents themselves are not understanding covid so now for them lack of that understanding some of them have lost their jobs now to now bring in the pressure of you don't have your job you don't have money you don't have food now can you do therapy can you teach your child this and this and that? 
it is too much. I think as professionals, let us also bear in mind that we want parents to be parents so that when the children come back to us, we have wholesome children. Yeah, that's my take. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Eva. Um, Eva is emphasizing that we let parents be parents. Um, I wouldn't want to use the word I like, but um, it's really food for thought where she says, uh, could we think about life skills? Could we think of making therapy fun and therapy be part of what is done in the home on a daily basis? And uh, as we think about parents and the children, let's think about uh, constraints. Uh, hello, colleagues. Yes, yes, we are here. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a counselor in the house. I will be calling upon, um, I'm seeing a lot of people and I want a lot of people to talk. Huh? Uh, Josephine Karani, can you hear me? Hello, I, Lydia. I, yes, Josephine, thank you. I, 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 I would like you to respond to the issues raised so far uh, and mm -hmm. coming from COVID is real. You've run, uh, you've been talking to patients who are positive. We've talked to young parents who have, uh, to patients, people who are positive and they have young children, they have their personal fears. Yeah, uh, Lydia, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry I joined uh, a bit late, uh, but uh, COVID, yes, you're right, it's real. And uh, I only imagine what it would be for especially parents who have fears not only of the COVID, but COVID-19, but also on um, the children who have special needs. When Eva talks of uh, parents doubling up for so many things, uh, I think that makes it even more difficult for, for them uh, normally, parents uh, keep asking, what are we going to do with our children? And uh, from my own experience, especially with people who are already so much deep into this, um, into this uh, COVID-19, I have seen them so worried, not only about themselves, but especially for, the, for their young ones. Uh, and uh, this is uh, sometimes taking a toll on their health, and uh, many times as a parent, even for myself, every time I come home, the first thing I think I think about is supposing, just supposing uh, this COVID entered up my home and got into my grandchild who is in the house, how would I handle that? And sometimes when I just think about that, it really makes um, one depressed. Sometimes you don't know where to start. You are like, uh, you are lost in everything. But I would like to support Eva that for the time being, let us just try to be parents. As much as we are trying to process our own fears, yeah, our children sometimes are also capable. Yeah, they're also capable. Don't carry them too much onto your shoulders. They, sometimes they are making it. When they want to go out, allow them to go out. Don't be too overprotective, yeah? Because when you do that again, it also now gets into you. And sometimes you even, um, um, it, it actually affects your parenting, yeah? It takes the energy out of you and we really need a lot of energy, Lydia, at this uh, particular time. Mm. So from what I've seen with the parents, especially those who are, find themselves in the quarantine centers, yeah? As much as they are, they are fighting with their own fears and their own uncertainties, then the, the, the fear of even the children being entangled in the whole thing is a, it becomes a problem. So that even the ones we have seen that are being released to go home, to go home after the isolation, the question they keep asking me is, do I still go back home to my children? And I have to keep reassuring them that if you have negative, if you have tested negative, then you have nothing to fear about. But uh, it still becomes very difficult for them, Lydia. And therefore, I am getting, uh, I'm getting the concerns. And uh, from what uh, I found, uh, I came late, as I said. But what I've, I've heard, I think um, maybe it is. Uh, the, the parents now we have to really help the parents just to to cope 
yeah just to cope how how much they can be able to do that it is not easy i understand that mm -hmm. thank you lydia mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Josephine. Uh, we have VSO in the house and we have Action for Children with a Disability. Uh, Melan, the last time we had uh, our monthly meeting for ACD, uh, uh, we had the Ministry of Health therapist. Uh, she was on board, on board that meeting and she said that the face-to-face -face therapy is not happening. I am wondering whether ACD has followed up with her to see what is the advice of the Ministry of Health and also as ACD, what kind of support do we think we should give our parents? Because um, from what um, I've, I captured from Christina all the way to Megna and uh, to Gesora, parents have a lot of questions and therefore they are kind of reaching out, but to who and who is going to respond to them? Melan and then somebody from VSO. Okay, thank you, Lydia. Good morning, everyone. This is Melan Marucha from Tent International which is the Secretariat for Action for Children with Disabilities. Actually, from the last meeting, there's a small team that came together that is trying to look at what could be done for our children, not only in relation to physiotherapy, but also in relation to education. So we identified some, um, Eva, I'm happy Eva is uh, here with us. Uh, Eva had been doing so much for children with uh, disabilities online. Since International had also even uh, way before COVID, had prepared some uh, videos on uh, physiotherapy, uh, like uh, for every age group, zero to three months, six to 12 months, uh, like that up to seven years. And uh, they've been online um, in our YouTube channel. So we are trying to see, because our parents are saying the children are lacking out on uh, developmental milestones. So what can we do to assist them? Already we had given them tablets, which they were using to get uh, uh, the videos. But then the, you see technology, uh, the tablets get broken. It's been a year since they were given. So there are many, many other issues about uh, the tablets. So they're wondering what else could be done to, to keep uh, the therapy going. So we are in discussion with um, KICD to see if these videos can, something can be done to these videos. And then they be aired on the Edu channel. But then, now it will not be the Edu channel during the class times. Probably it could be over the weekends or off session. But this is a very raw discussion that is uh, ongoing with KICD. And uh, I'm sure when uh, things are um, settled, I'll inform this particular committee to check it out. Thank you, Lydia. Uh, thank you, Melen. I, I think for the therapist in the house, you're hearing uh, that ACD and specifically Sense International has mm -hmm. some video. Uh, maybe, Melen, it's good for you to clarify. Can we access those videos as organizations, as parents? Where can we access them? Um, is it okay for us to use them as an organization or do we have to come back and acknowledge? Just clarify that uh, because if the videos are there, uh, can we see whether they can be used by more people? Please clarify. Yes, thank you, Lydia, again. Actually, the videos have been put on YouTube, meaning they're very public. It's only that now we are trying to tell people, can you get into YouTube? But honestly, how many of our parents can get into YouTube to, to look at the videos? So we are trying as much as possible to make sure that uh, the parents can get them uh, in the best way possible. But the videos are very public in YouTube, on YouTube, our YouTube channel, just go to Sense International Kenya. You'll find many other videos even relating to activities of daily living, relating to livelihoods for uh, our young adults uh, with disabilities. And then maybe what, uh, what uh, since the videos are public, they can be used by anyone. But in case you decide to use them on a specific session, like maybe you're airing them to to uh, a specific committee or team, it would just be good to acknowledge that these have been done by Sense International or we just notify Sense International. But in terms of restrictions of using the videos, the, the wider they spread, the better for us. Thank you, Lydia. Uh Thank you very much. Before somebody from VSO says something, I, I would like this group to think in terms of, uh, I don't know whether we have somebody from UDPK, could we also try and see whether we can approach the National Council to have these videos aired on free-to-air channels like KBC? Um, 
if they could just give 30 minutes, we do different things, maybe it would help more parents. My thoughts. Somebody from VSO, I've seen Fred, I've seen, uh, I've seen other people from VSO. Hi, uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, not really a professional in uh, this sector, uh, but I think we've been uh, listening to uh, uh, various experts speak about this uh, particular uh, uh, concern. And I want to actually support what uh, uh, Eva has mentioned, that uh, at this particular time, we really need to focus more in terms of uh, making it light for parents, because we are also appreciating that uh, it could be a bit uh, overwhelming them with the kids at this particular type which is taking. So it's just seeing how we can uh, make it later. And uh, I also saw what uh, Caroline was, had uh, put on the chat around just uh, uh, looking at the, the basics that we need to focus on at this particular time. But as we are so, we are just keen to see uh, what is happening and uh, uh, trying to engage with the parents for the support we need to give to uh, parents who are in it. And then you did ask about our engagement with the Ministry of Health. Uh, we've not really had a proactive engagement with the Ministry of Health as for now, right? so we are keen to engage with them to see how uh, uh, the parents can continue uh, getting support uh, from the ministry in terms of uh, supporting their children with therapy. Particularly, maybe when the situation normalizes, if there could be certain accelerated program that will enable children uh, uh, access such services so that uh, enable them to continue their learning. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Fred. Uh, we are not coming in as experts. We are coming in as people who are concerned. I see hands up. I can see Jerry Maria. Hand is up. Jerry, I'll give you one minute. Then I will ask Sylvia Mora to to say something and to respond to the issues uh, Eva raised that let parents be parents and not be therapists. Um, and then um, we were told that we could mix up therapy with the ho daily home routine. So, uh, Jerry Maria, and then after that, uh, Sylvia Moran. Oh, hi, Maria. Yes. Well, uh, thank you for the conversation. Uh, it has been very informative and it's good to know what's going on there. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to bring my back to you. Um, I work with parents in the informal center or yes. in the informal places. Yes. And in the beginning of this year, we started offering therapy and one key method together with SEP Kenya, yeah. uh, we got the parents involved in the therapy. And the mothers were very hands-on with yeah. what they were doing. And so we have found um because of involving the parents in the first place, transitioning during this COVID time has been a bit simpler because now we can follow up through phone call and our therapist, uh, SEP, SEP and the therapist have been calling the parents and giving activities. And once you follow up, you find out the parents are actually managing to integrate the activities into the usual daily program. And also we find that um, Parents are becoming more accountable for and responsible for the therapy program. So 
I just wanted to mention that uh, phone therapy is actually working of us and we can actually see the progress of it. Okay. Thank you, Njeri. Uh, I think what we are getting from Njeri is that structure is very critical. And um, in, in everything we are told, in everything we give thanks, that uh, we've had this COVID-19 give us a few wake-up calls, uh, raise for us a few gaps we've not uh, been privy to because things were happening. I listened to Christina saying, you take the child for therapy and um, you take a walk. I personally sometimes encourage parents to take a walk, but I think we are learning that we need to have structures in place just in case the therapist didn't turn up, just in case. Uh, maybe it rained too heavily and we didn't go for therapy. So we need to put structures in place. And I think uh, we really, really look at the model that SEPU has, uh, plus other therapists that will also share their structures. Uh, allow me to also give uh, opportunity to Gesora. I can see his hand is up. Uh, Maria, maybe you could remove for me Jerry's hand because she has talked. Uh, Gesora, your hand is up. You have 30 seconds so that uh, then I can move to Sylvia Mora. Thank you, Madam Chege. Uh, my, I, I've heard uh, uh, the, the contributions from the other parties and I really appreciate uh, the progress that uh, they're making. Uh, one issue that uh, I have been getting uh, from the uh, in concern of the videos that we share maybe through WhatsApp, the challenge is if the video that we share is not specific to a certain uh, issue that has been raised, uh, the parents kind of like keep on asking, the, they repeat their own question, the, the same, same question that they were asking. So I, I was thinking if the videos that we could be making could be from the questions that the parents uh, raise because that's we, we we know most of the children of special needs are different and they have different issues uh, which are supposed to be addressed differently so by maybe uh, focusing uh, maybe in, uh, in groups such as whatsapp uh, to get specific questions and then video clips might uh, can be made which might be aired uh, maybe in the uh, TV station or free to air channels in regard to the specific question that parents are asking. And uh, maybe I'll also ask uh, Madam Chege to raise the issue of uh, speech uh, where we have a, a sister, a speech therapist from, uh, sister or teacher, speech therapist from Kise, who has been uh, doing uh, speech therapy and uh, it's been uh, actually working for her. And I also think uh, we can also maybe use her and uh, to, to, to get, uh, uh, make clips to assist uh, parents who have uh, speech and delayed uh, speech issues. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Vincent. Um, I think speech was addressed by Christina. She said she's working on, uh, she's, she's able to work online. Actually, the bigger animal in the house is occupational therapy and physiotherapy uh, because uh, I think speech therapy, Christina had uh, allayed the fears and, and now you have confirmed. I'm also aware that sister is doing speech therapy online. Uh, about doing different video cl clips for different parents, uh, I think that is something then the therapist needs to keep on addressing. Sylvia Mora, by two weeks of uh, shutdown, uh, you were covered on air uh, with your two lovely children. And um, I had Eva saying that she would like to go and hug Christina and give her time to sleep. I think for me, it caught me like, yeah, we are on lockdown. And this lockdown might uh, mean I'm within a restrained space. But I looked at Sylvia going up the roof with her children. I engaged her and asked her, how are the children wearing the masks and all those kind of things. I think it's good to hear from Sylvia and um, especially now this issue of COVID and uh, therapy. Sylvia Mora, if you can hear me. I can hear you very well. Yeah, um, the chance is yours now. All right, thank you. Thank you for having us and for having this forum. 
and for at least connecting all of us so that we're able to discuss the different areas and the different challenges and the different interventions we are all trying as we try to keep afloat. It's been very hard and uh, to address the question of parents be parents. Um, I think with time, it has gotten easier considering when we did the feature and now because the impact immediately was very intense for the children, for myself. Because um, at the same time, you're still trying to grapple with what is changing, what is happening. There's all the fears of uh, the changes or loss of work. And at the same time, you're trying to maintain normal when it's abnormal to even try doing that. There are changes that I've tried to also adjust to, and I, I support what Eva was saying, is because we're trying to, remember you're a human being, then we have our children who also depend on us. And looking at, um, uh, in our special case for us who are single parents, you double that by two, because you're, you're the center point of everything. At this point, even if you have a nanny in the house, there is only so much they can help you with. You can't delegate therapy. You can't start teaching her how to do speech and OT in the house. And uh, looking at as much as for personally, because I have researched and read so much about these things and hosted um, therapists and people in this field uh, through my show on Science TV, that's how I've gained some knowledge. And I, I try to apply this at home. But the other thing I try to accept is I am a human being. There is only so much I can do. Considering as a parent, that I also had my routine that keeps me sane in terms of handling the two special children and also the fact that they're, they're special kids with different needs. My ADHD son learns totally different and uh, needs a very different um, intervention to keep him calm as compared to Andrew who has autism. For autism, it's, 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 it's a, a totally different ball game in terms of how much it demands from you. I feel what Christine says because, uh, for example, yesterday I, uh, with the new routine I've set for myself that I am working on every alternate day to keep myself sane because at the end of the day, these kids still need to feed and uh, you have to work to ensure that and keep also like the advocacy that we're doing for everyone else because those are the things that you're dependent on to make you feel that normalcy. Because now if you say, okay, I have also issues, let me focus on me and not also help other parents, there is that void and then it gets depressing. Well, uh, this is from experience. The first two weeks, I would not lie, I was so depressed that I started feeling the symptoms of COVID because you're thinking too much about it. That right now, you, on you only look at uh, television and COVID stories once in a day to just get an update when necessary, just to try and not get swallowed up in all of this, um, what is going on. But the balance of, 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 of parenting, of being a therapist, being a teacher, uh, I tried teaching, like I'm trying to teach my son the sound, this is, I learned it as A, he's reading it as a sound, we are not in the same platform. I cannot take up that duty. So it makes it very hard to try and play catch up with all of this. So in, in, in agreeing to doing what you can, I do what I can when they're ready for it, because the minute I try, I also force them, it's time for this. And they're not in that space. We both, I get annoyed. He starts having a meltdown and it becomes a very impossible situation in the house. Yeah. So as much as we're, and even the stories of now wearing the mask, like you said, uh, it took making it look cool for them to, you know, because it's different for them to want to do it. And then seeing everyone on TV is doing it and explaining why we're wearing the mask. So they understand that um, if we are going outside, remember before I was not allowing them to go outside, it was either the rooftop, even downstairs were not allowed because uh, like for someone like Bradley who has ADHD, he talks to everyone, he will go hug, anyone touch, everything. So that makes it triple stressful going outside. So you really cut it off. But now I've, I've had, he's, he's understood, you have to wash your hands, you have to sanitize if you touch anything. If you're walking, not touching the walls, not touching the rails. So if, the more we do it, the more they grasp it. As for the mask, you emphasize, you either wear it or you go back to the house. So it becomes also for them, they take part in the decision. We go outside, these are the limitations. If we're staying inside, this is what we have to do. Um, if, if we don't do that, then that means oh, you're staying inside. So that, that's how it has been. 
And just to comment on your issue about media, now that that's on the professional side, part of what it is that I do on airing um, the lessons, there will be the challenge of um, how the clarity and stuff like that. And then the challenge we have also with the content, as it has been said, uh, do we have sufficient content for all the kids? And remember, all kids are different in different spaces in terms of their IEPs. This is now uh, from my experience and uh, with the, the way we are doing the Saturday Hangout, when you interact with parents, uh, you find even when you try to do therapy, there is a different way of doing therapy when you are discussing with perpetual on the, for a parent with ASD, for a parent with DS, a parent with CP. So all these things we have to also consider. So we, by the time we engage, I don't know if the National Council will come through. Uh, this is now for the neurodiverse community in light with how non-inclusive it feels of the reception. And this I'm just speaking from my personal engagement and other parents and organizations that have spoken. So I don't know, maybe we might have to rethink how else is it, it means uh, contacting the media houses that um, are willing. Because remember media also, for them to take the step to actually get to the free-to-air channels, uh, it's, it's, it's a long process. And uh, you need to have like a, me, a media house that will back you up, and, or several of them. For them, airtime is something you pay for. So if we want free service, we might have to start with the smaller and also with those who look at that content as something that's meaningful to them. Because they're, in, in media, they say disability is not sexy, so it is not going to be a priority for them. And they look at the coverage uh, of who they're going to be targeting, like their target audience. They look at the numbers, and if it's not going to be increasing their viewership, then they'll put it as a man issue. So that, that's some of the challenges when it comes to PR communications that you have to, to look at. Someone like, uh, like science TV, I'm sure will be open to it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. I think you've given us quite a mouthful. Uh, still, uh, and I think it's very good, uh, one coming from uh, an ad a person who does advocacy and uh, a parent of uh, two children with different disabilities. Members, if you listened, there was still the issue of a depressed parent or a parent who feels a bit, uh, a bit of burnout. And then there was also the issue of balancing. How do we do balancing? You, if you listened to Sylvia several times say, I had to do something to remain normal. I had to, to, to have something for me. Uh, there's somebody called Dynamic OT. Uh, if you would switch on your mic and tell us. How, how, how are we going to do this therapy uh, during this COVID era? How are we going to do this therapy? Because um, yes, Eva told us to let parents be parents, but one thing of being a parent is wanting the best for your child. And the smiles I see on parents when their children gain milestones uh, during therapy is part and parcel of being a parent. Dynamic or team. How do we continue being parents and ensuring also that our children are uh, not losing on gained milestones? Yes, so hello everyone. My name is Perpetua and a dynamic OT. <laughs> so, <laughs> Perpetua, happy, finally. Yes, I'm happy to be here. I had a previous meeting. Sorry, I, I checked in a little bit late. So what I can say is that I agree with Eva, let parents be parents. But also as a professional, I, I would say as you, as you be you as parents, try and help your children and support them by offering them something that will improve them one way or another. You don't have to schedule a whole hour of therapy. You don't have to put it every single day, but it's just the deliberateness of doing it. So as Sylvia mentioned in the parents, special needs parents hangout, she, she put up the resources and they are record, they're all recorded. So you can always go back and see what as parents you can try. But all I can say is that the therapy has to continue one way or another. Because the why it needs to continue is because we would love our kids to progress. So if we continue, then it means either we sustain the progress or we ensure there is no regress. So the how is through through just catching base catching base with your therapist. I know some parents are already accessing therapists. Just touch base with your therapist. See how see how you can you can see they they do something. If 
even if it is three three times a week they do something ask your therapist to give you activities it really doesn't have to be on video even just a phone call just a phone call is is at times is enough just getting activities yeah but just that deliberateness of consistency that you are doing something every single week something that will help your child when you feel frustrated as sylvia says take a break sort yourself out first but when you get back to you <laughs> try try do something uh, uh thank you thank you perpetua one thing we will appreciate is that uh we are all uh in support of the principal caregiver i hear us referring to that person as the parent allow me to use the word principal caregiver um and uh, if you feel uh, overwhelmed or uh, a bit burnout uh, we've been told uh, let it go just let it go take that uh, midday nap that uh, Christina took it's normal it's very fine you you have to keep sane and you have to keep fine remember for therapy to work even the therapist themselves have to be relaxed and uh, in this case then the therapist is the parent members we've done one hour of very good uh, discussion and uh, i'm almost bringing this meeting of ours to an end as we head towards that end i'm still looking out for any hands raised up uh, uh for anybody who would like to put in something uh we've learned uh, a few things sepu has a structure and uh they are using video uh, they are using uh messages whatsapp videos and calling in the client and this was also uh, reaffirmed by Njeri maria thank you very much the idea of peer parents or peer educators and uh, they have promised us that uh, when because they've realized that there's burnout in some of the parents then there's likely to be an occasional visit maybe in our next meeting we shall hear whether whether that occasional visit did happen we've been told by Eva Nyoike to remain as parents and to try and mix up therapy with things that would be interesting to the children those who have the space use the space do something uh wash if you can especially uh, cook do something even sing a song uh, that could be part of therapy as you do those uh, exercises. We've learned from uh, Melen Malocha that uh, there are resources on YouTube uh, prepared by Sense International starting from zero to three months, six to seven, seven to 12 months, if I got it right. And uh, Sylvia Mora has also talked about resources that are available. She has also referred us to Sign TV we've learned through perpetua and christina that these are hangout for parents with children with special needs and that uh Eva Nyoke is also doing a lot i think this is really a lot of information that we are gaining and i think for those of us who are practitioners and those of us who are advocates and those of us who are parents then we will reach out to these different forums and see what is it that we can pick so that we are able to serve the people we serve in the best way possible so uh, i would like us to ask from this particular discussion that we've had what are the three deliverables we are working out with and i will not call on anyone whoever walks whoever gets the prophetic hour the spirit say something what are we working out of this meeting with open forum switch on your mic and say something hello christian here yes christina for me it would be how do we support parents to support their kids okay next uh, it's dynamic again what i can say is that my take home according to the people in the room i'm i'm, I'm picking that for for things to move at any given time at the table, we need primary caregivers or parents, we need policy makers, we need professionals, we also need the, the children themselves, those who can talk. So for, for, for things to move, we need to consider all these four people so that we make it very holistic. 
thank you, Perpetua. And therefore, it's uh, between myself and Maria. Uh, I think we needed to invite a few policy uh, office bearers, maybe from the Ministry of Health and also the Ministry of Education. We shall keep that in mind. Thank you. I can see Sepp wants to say something. Yes. Carolina, allow me to call you that because I don't yes. want to mispronounce your name. Caroline is just easier. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay. What I really uh, take from the meeting is the importance of working with the parent or or even nannies. You know, uh, sometimes when I have my therapy sessions now as a private therapy uh, therapist, I have the parent or the nanny there. So it's very much then a continuation when things happen because I can get sick or or you know something happens. So it's very crucial and. What they also feel, of course, it depends on the condition of the child. That is a, like a, cerebral palsy, a child with cerebral palsy. You have mm -hmm. to continue positioning and handling in the right way. Others, you get a deterioration of the condition, which is not a thing. But if you talk about education, it's a different thing. Then I agree that uh, you can play with the child. You can just do daily activities and not to stress yourself too much as a parent. But so I, I strongly think if the parent is on board from the beginning and it's in a, in a fun way, you know, it's not, um, it's uh, giving some structure, giving some hooks with some ideas which are not difficult. So like occupational therapy, I do it on, on Zoom with people who, who can afford to, to have the Zoom and it's really working. But of course, you need the parent on the other side of the, of the screen and uh, otherwise it doesn't work, but it, it is possible. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, before I allow the person with their hand up to say something, I would like to address myself to the program officers and uh, in the house and those people who write proposals. I think uh, post-COVID era, we need to do a lot of uh, parents' uh, capacity building workshops just in case we're not saying COVID is coming back but as uh, Caroline has said we need to realize that once in a while the therapist might not be available and uh, instead of queuing a lot of parents uh, waiting for their turn maybe it's a high time we do more uh, to uh, enhance the capacity of parents to do therapy so that they do not find themselves in a corner where they, are, they don't know what to do uh, or they know what to do but they're already overwhelmed. Vincent, your hand is up. Um, what I'd say, of, uh, as we close, I think the issue that you raised on uh, having uh, the clips being aired on uh, uh, the non-subscription channels is a, is a great idea since we have most of our parents are not on uh, social media they don't have the android uh, um, uh, uh, phones to yeah. be able to access so i think uh, if we work uh, fast on that we'll be touching uh, so many parents out there yeah thank you thank you lazarus maraca your name is uh, the last on my list What are you carrying from this meeting? Razaraz? Yes. Yes. So, Please in introduce yourself and tell us what you're carrying from this meeting. Actually, I'm uh, an occupational therapist. Eh? Yes. And uh, I really appreciate uh, all of you for making this program successful. And actually, I've learned so many things how to cooperate with parents so that to make maybe therapy session to be effective and so on. So we need to unite as teachers, specialists, teachers, therapists, every now and then so that we can help these uh, children with special needs to mm. learn and uh, be in a position to live a daily life as any other given child. Thank you. Stella? I can see your mic is on. Stella. Okay. Um, it seems that uh, 
we've covered good ground and it is 11 minutes past uh, the hour of uh, 12 noon. I would like to take us back to our host, Maria Omare, who has been so kind to pay for us this particular meeting uh, and um, who had a vision of the necessity for us to meet, to have this kind of deliberations. And as I take you back to Maria, I would like to say that um, we have to look at how we incorporate uh, psychologists, therapists in the house, so that uh, then they're able to support the parents with answering some of those questions. Sometimes as a parent, you just want to know what you're feeling is normal. It is okay to take that midday mid nap because as Christina said, if the parent and especially the key caregiver of the house is unwell, then the whole house is unwell. I would also like to put my video on just in case you've forgotten Lydia Chege. Uh, <laughs> that's me. Hi, everyone. And I hand you over to Maria and thank you very, very much for the ample time that you've given me. Maria? Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for taking time to be part of the meeting. Hi, once again, for those who I didn't say hi to. Um, yes, it has been really, I'd say, refreshing. And uh, personally, I've learned a lot. And I look forward for more engagement. So uh, I hear what all of us are saying. Next time, Lydia, we're going to work really hard to bring in policymakers, people from um, different nine ministries as well as um, media. I'm looking at having media join next time. If we can rope in, even if it's a smaller media house, so that we can have like a practical way forward and an opportunity for advocacy to see the videos that all of us are working towards to be aired mm -hmm. so that our parents can benefit. So uh, next steps, number one, we need to learn how to, uh, we'll definitely secure the meeting. Thank you, Gesora, you suggested Science TV. We are going to reach out to them. Um, we are going to look towards securing our meeting uh, so that we don't have weird hackers interrupting us, as has been the case. And uh, we'll also schedule a meeting on a later date that shall be communicated to everybody who registered. Uh, I have some of your emails. Uh, Please WhatsApp me your email address so that I can keep you on the mailing list for the next step. So I thank Sana. I super thank Lydia Tege for the awesome moderation, as well as thank you, Lydia. Uh, she's mentioned that she can speak to signs in advance, and we'll see how to carry that. That's, that's Sylvia. That's Sylvia. Sylvia. That's Sylvia. Sylvia Mora. Sylvia states that. I also thank mm -hmm. the silent people on the background. That's my team at Action Foundation. Um, they will. They have. They are taking notes from this meeting and we are going to share a report so that we can all be on the loop and we can share it out to other people. So uh, looking forward to the next meeting and yes, asante sana and have a lovely day.